<laughs> Serves a right for travelling in a carriage alone. <laughs> Oh, well, first today. <laughs> Come in. Morning, headmaster. Oh, oh, oh. Sir Halliford. The mail. The mail. That's good. We'll just go through it, shall we? Bill. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Income tax. <laughs> Statement of account. Another bill. Wait a minute. There seems to be a check in this one. Oh, it might be Smith Minor's piano lessons. His grandmother's paying, you know. It's not one of those detergent coupons, I hope. <laughs> Have a look at this. No. Yes. I've won the pools. What? I I've won the football pools. I I've won 38,000 pounds on the football pools. <laughs> I'm rich! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I won 38,000 pounds of the football pool. <laughs> I won the pool. Tell everybody. I won the pool. I must keep calm. <laughs> I won them. I won the pool. <laughs> Dear sir, we are happy. They're happy. <laughs> We're happy to inform you that you have won first dividend on our triple charge pool. We enclose you with our cheque for £38,000. £38,000! Look at all those lovely knots! <laughs> Incredible! That's just what it is. You read about it happening to other people. When it happens to you, it takes your breath away. Do you know the most incredible part? What? I don't even do the pools! <laughs> Best to Oliver Pettigrew. Pay Oliver Pettigrew. Oh. Whew. For a terrible moment, I thought I'd lost the money. <laughs> you have had, Master. It isn't your money, it's Mr. Pettigrew's. Comes the same thing, doesn't it? You know very well he'd share his last farthing with me. Oh, well, yes. Well, the last farthing, first 38,000 pounds. What's the difference? Well, look, let's ring him up and tell him the no, good news. No, he'll be in in a minute to, to, to take my tray. Let's give him the thrill of opening the envelope himself. Get the smelling salts. Smelling salts? Yes, yeah, he'll keel over like a felled tree. <laughs> and stand by to catch him, too. You know old Pettigrew, he, he gets heart palpitations playing rummy for wine guns. <laughs> I think he'll be here in a minute. <laughs> act composed. Act composed. Don't let him see you. Come in, yeah. Good morning, Headmaster. Nice, nice breakfast. Yes, thank you. Oh, good morning, Mr. Halliford. Good morning, Mr. Pettigrew. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of a nip in the air this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, had the post come? Uh, yes, uh, there was one letter for you. I opened it by mistake. Oh, thank you, Headmaster. Well, isn't that nice? Well, I'll just wash these things up. <laughs> but you... The penny hasn't dropped yet. Wait. Pull yourself together. I've been feeding you warm, sweet tea since 8.30 this morning. We can't go on feeding you, treating you for shock indefinitely. Could I have another tranquilizer? <laughs> That's three family-sized bottles you've had already today. <laughs> you can't have any more. Honestly, you're up to the bilges with warm, sweet tea. You hold rattling with blue pills. 
Goodness knows what would have happened if it had been bad news. But, Headmaster, you don't seem to grasp. To me, this is bad news. Oh, don't be so ridiculous. I never did the pools with any thought of winning. <laughs> well, why did you do them? Well, it all started when they sent me a printed letter asking me to. There was a photograph of the managing director on top. Such a kindly looking man with twinkling eyes. Twinkling eyes? His eyes have got every right to twinkle. He owns half Liverpool. <laughs> well, the letter was a personal plea to me to join what he called the happy circle. It would have been churlish to refuse. But now, oh dear. <laughs> but to win that thousand pounds. Don't keep saying it as though it was a hardship. Well, it all depends how you view this sort of thing. There's only one way you can view this sort of thing. Through an alcoholic haze. <laughs> the quicker we get started, the better. Now, come on, Peppers. Come on. Come on, my, my golden boy. Snap out of it. Be gone, dull care. We must start thinking how we're going to spend your money, mustn't we? Headmaster. Yes? I've decided how I'm going to spend it. Good boy. What's it going to be, then? A villa in Portofino. A luxury cruise in the Caribbean, basking on the sun-kissed sands by the palm-fringed lagoon. Your tousled head resting on someone's golden thigh. None of those things. Who are you, old devil? <laughs> what have you thought of that I haven't thought of? I'm ready for any excess. Name your pleasure. Headmaster, I'm going to give it all to charity. Charity? Who's she? <laughs> The whole £38,000 will be donated to a worthy cause. Headmaster, why are you looking at me like that? No. I've never heard anything so immoral in all my life. Give the whole thousand pounds pounds away. Now, believe me, Headmaster, it's the only thing to do with wealth of this kind. I haven't earned it. I don't deserve it. And if I were to spend it on selfish pleasures when... No, I couldn't. I couldn't. I've got to live with myself. With a bank balance like that, you can live with anybody! <laughs> no, Headmaster, my mind is made up. I shall get in touch with the FFSF. FFSF? What's that? That's the Four-Footed Friends Fund. They look after all the sick and poorly fed. <laughs> look, it's a leg pull, isn't it? You're having old Jim on a piece of string, aren't you? Say you are, please. No, Headmaster, I'm giving it all to our Four-Footed Friends. Thirty-eight thousand pounds. can only happen once in a lifetime. He's giving it all away. Oh. His master, you're trembling. Yes. Oh, that villa. Oh, that cruise. Oh, that bird on the beach. <laughs> oh, yes, it's all here in the newspaper. Interviewed at his office. Reverend Barnfield Monroe, secretary of the Four Footed Friends Fund, was jubilant. Mr. Oliver Pettigrew's selfless generosity, he declared, shines forth in a materialistic world like a... Like a what? It says here, like a bacon. <laughs> I suppose it's a misprint for beacon. Oh, yes. It goes on. Arrangements have been made for balding foot balding. <laughs> balding 48-year-old Oliver Pettigrew Ooh. to present the cheque officially to the Reverend Monroe tomorrow at London's glossy Ritz-Carlton Hotel. If only the headmaster had won this money. Oh, admittedly, we'd be up to here in empty bottles by now, but it would have been worth it. You know how generous he gets when he's jugged up. Yes, it's a sort of maudly and open-handedness. Yes, at the old boy's dinner, he ended up on the balcony scattering coins to the poor of the parish. It's quite <laughs> true. I got four of night prints. The only hope now... <laughs> All we can hope is that Pettigrew will respond to this new scheme of the heads. What's that? It's psychological warfare. Oh! Is that is he over it? Coercion! No, 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 I won't have any more. Oh, look out, here he is. I was kept by that lower third game. Right, this is where we start the treatment. Really, they are pickles, those little boys. They've been playing me up in the most dreadful way today. <laughs> you know, I cannot convince those boys that even in the most beautiful of Shakespeare's passages, there are certain words that cannot be discussed until they get into the upper fifth. Is there any coffee left? Oh, dear. No, it's, uh... <laughs> You know, young fella said rather a funny thing when I reprimanded him for snoring in class today. He said... Oh, that wind and I'll catch you around the cloisters. <laughs> <laughs> right. An easterly one, I think. 
Full coffee left. I'm afraid it's finished, Headmaster. Oh, yes, Headmaster. I saved some specially for latecomers. Thank you. Oh, well, well, well. Mr. Pettigrew, I've just been reading your press notices. Uh, how is Chiselbury's shining bacon? <laughs> <laughs> You're all being dreadfully unfair. After all, you're all teachers. You should realize better than most people that a man must do what he knows to be right. That's the point. You don't know. That's why we're all so fed up with you. What do you mean? Well, you say it's all right to give this money away to charity instead of spending it on pleasures. How can you be sure of that? You've never had any pleasures. Oh, but I have, Headmaster. Those weekends at Frinton with Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> My Max Jaffa records. The annual fur and feather fake. Mm. That's a right catalogue of debauchery, that is. <laughs> you can count me out of that lot. I mean the real pleasures, wine, women and song. Why, you've never drunk, you've never sung, you've never... anything. <laughs> I, I've never missed those things. Because you've never had them. Here you are making this great noble gesture of renouncing the flesh pots. You wouldn't know a flesh pot if one came up and bit you. What difference does that make? Tell him, fellas. Supposing one day you were to get a taste for the good thing. Oh, I, How do you know you wouldn't find you like them? Oh, I wouldn't. All oh, that you'd buy. And what well, then? I... A lifetime of regret. Of all the words of tongue and pen, the saddest star it might have been. It doesn't rhyme, but the sentiment is right. Now, look here, Oliver Pettigrew, I put it to you. Is it right to give away this lolly before you sample its pleasures? Well, I do see your point, Headmaster, but I don't see how I can sample them. I've only got until tomorrow. Exactly. Oh, what's all this? Where am I going? We are going to London's glossy Ritz-Carlton Hotel. I booked the penthouse suite. What for? One sample basin full of the flesh pots. Just one evening, one glimpse of what life might be. Music, laughter, elegance, and females who don't smell of chalk. <laughs> if you don't like it, you can give away the money tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. What do you say? Well, all right. Only let me just go and say goodbye to Cheeky. Oh, dear. Fancy going to say goodbye to his golden hamster. He can afford a platinum one now. <laughs> oh, dear. I do hope it works, gentlemen, but uh, I got a nasty feeling we're 20 years too late. <laughs> nothing to make a complaint about there. <laughs> Here, uh, buy yourself something uh, uh, deliciously frilly. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Come off it, September morn. <laughs> She's gone now. Have you fixed that tie? I don't seem to be able to get it right, Headmaster. Of course you never will if you won't let go of that. I, I'm not going to let go of a case containing 38,000 pounds. I ought never to have let you persuade me to change it into five pound notes. We changed it into fivers for a very good reason. Tuck your shirt in. Oh, but... <laughs> uh, oh Headmaster. I want you to get used to the look of your loot. Get used to the, the feel of it. Oh, dear. Oh, it frightens me. The smell of it. Oh, the music of it. Listen to that. The music of the fibers. Rhapsody in blue. <laughs> <laughs> Bestrew them around you. 
Stuff your pockets full of them wherever you go. And me too. Yeah. <laughs> Feel yourself bulging at all points with purchasing power. Now, get yourself outside this. Oh, what is this? Four quid a bottle. <laughs> Mum's 98. She doesn't look a day over 60. <laughs> Yes. Oliver Pettigrew, this is your life. <laughs> <laughs> is this the stuff that we had at the station buffet? No, 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 this is grown-up sham. <laughs> grown-up sham with a giggle in every bubble. Sluice it down. <laughs> this will be the grub. Come on. Oh, it's not the right. <laughs> Thank you. Just screw it around, gentlemen. We'll just pick at it at our leisure. Give the man something. Oh, yes, of course. Not that. Think big. Go oh. on, one or two of those. Thank you, my lord. <laughs> Why did you call me my lord? Because you are a lord. You're eating like a lord, you're drinking, you're living like a lord. In the eyes of the world, you're somebody. Oh, really? Yes. I suppose I am. Drink up. <laughs> Feel the bubbles go up your hooter. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's have a dab at the food, shall we? <laughs> See this? Oh, what is it? Know where that comes from? Yeah. Moscow. Mm -hmm. Caviar. Beluga. Three quid a teaspoon for. Oh, <laughs> fish. I shall not allow my fool's wind to change my way of life. <laughs> <laughs> not much. Here. Help yourself to an Onassis sandwich. Oh. <laughs> oh, not Honey, safely. I don't see how we're ever going to get through all this. Not on our own, we never will. Oh. We're having a company. Company? Female company. Female? Mm. Oh, dear. That'll be them. I'll let the girls in. Sonia! We meet again. Marla, bless you. Maxine! Nanette, um, and Nadia, <laughs> and, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> Oliver, I want you to meet the girls of the Ritz-Carlton Follies, girls. I'm throwing him among you. Oliver! Oh, gracious, how do you do? Headmaster, there, there seem to be six of them. Of course there are six of them. <laughs> Three each. <laughs> <laughs> one on, one off, and one in the wash. <laughs> This is a way to live, isn't it, eh? Wine, women, and song! Oh, yeah. Yeah. in the morning. Four o'clock. No word from the head. Hello? Chiselbury Exchange? Oh, I'm sorry to get you out of a warm bed, Flossie, but has anybody been trying to phone us from London's glossy Ritz Carlton Hotel? Thank you. Have the Zeppelins passed over yet? Oh. Oh, oh. schemes fail. I'm afraid Pettigrew's too set in his ways to change his outlook. But the headmaster said he'd phone us one way or the other. He's probably too miserable even to talk. Poor old Jim. Ah! <laughs> Join in while Petters does the samba. That's me. <laughs>
done much in my life yet, Master. You were right. This is the life. So, that appointment with the reverend gentleman at 11 o'clock. Cancel it. I'm keeping all our money. <laughs> I know what to spend it on now. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh <please don't. laughs> Let's go and have some lobster. <laughs> it's worked. <laughs> Ours. <coughs> Mine. Jim, there's no more champagne left. Uh, order another dozen crates. <laughs> this party's only just beginning. Everybody, come on, join in the conga. Carpets, they're thicker than the beds at school. <laughs> Awfully quiet in there. Headmaster, are you in there? Oh, yes. Why don't you sound the buzzer? Oh, Mr. Head. <laughs> Headmaster, wake up. Doesn't seem to be anybody in there. Well, he hasn't left the hotel. The receptionist said so. Are you sure it's locked? Oh, don't be silly. Of course it's... Oh. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I miss you. Well, hello! <laughs> <laughs> Headmaster? Well, where is he? Look. Master. No, Master, no, wake up. no, Maxine, I can't dance anymore. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, my head. Oh, it's all right, Master. We'll get you under the settee. Oh, I don't need any help. Oh, oh. oh. oh I'm bad. Oh, I'm real what bad. What happened, Headmaster? We didn't hear from you. You've obviously had quite a party. Party? Oh, party. Oh, there's been nothing like it since the fall of Babylon. Yes, but what about Pettigrew? Pettigrew? Oh, he took to it like a duck takes to water. Talk about the playboy of the Western world. Oh, so he's keeping the money. Keeping the money? He wouldn't part with his money for anything. Oh, how <laughs> splendid. He'd have to break the news to that poor clergyman from the FFFFFFF. <laughs> What's the time? It's about half past ten. He'll be here in half an hour. The appointment was for 11 o'clock Thursday morning. What's the matter? Today's Friday. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no wonder I feel bad. <laughs> what happened to Thursday, then? Well, can't you remember? <laughs> remember, there's just sort of blurred patches like a Picasso painting in my eyes. Do you mean to say that the party went on all through yesterday as well? Keep your voice down, please. Oh, yes, I suppose it must have done. Yes, I, I remember it was yesterday morning we ordered the aeroplane. Aeroplane? Yeah, Pettigrew wanted to do some sky writing. Some Shakespearean word that he wanted across the sky. He had to go up three times. <laughs> he couldn't spell it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's really taken to this sort of life. I'll never keep pace with him. Excuse me. Is that thunder? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, you remember me, Professor Edwards? Reverend Barnfield Munro. Reverend Barnfield Munro, yes. I'm so sorry. I must apologize for Pettigrew missing his appointment yesterday morning. Oh, but you've already apologized for that. I have? When we met last night. We met? Well, don't you remember? There was nobody here when I called for my morning appointment. I kept telephoning Mr. Pettigrew all day. It wasn't until rather late last night that I found you in. Hey, this is a well, little bit of blank. I'm a little bit... Not with it this morning, Reverend. I'll, I'll just have a short snore. <laughs> you know, you, you get this sort of trouble occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, just a 
such my old trouble. Yes, yes, you were swaying a little when we spoke last night. Oh, no. Well, of course, if you're not feeling well, I wouldn't dream of staying. I just say thank you again for your generosity and wish you better. Thank you very much. Yes, thank me again for what generosity? Well, don't you remember? Last night, uh, after you'd explained to me that Mr. Pettigrew had changed his mind about the donation, you were kind enough to listen while I outlined to you some of the heartbreaking causes that the fund tries to help. Then what happened? Great tears rolled down your cheeks, sir. <laughs> if Mr. Pettigrew won't help you with a donation, you said, I will. Oh, no. You've done it again. Always when he's dragged up. <laughs> with a gesture that I shall never forget, you thrust into my hands a suitcase brimming with five-pound notes. <laughs> the lot! We'll never forget you, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> We might have known this would happen. Head master, why didn't you control that? I mean, hello there. What's up, Jack? Pretty good. What's up? Shit. Help me, head master. I, I, I've just bought six polo ponies. Get on the room, service. Then the girls are waiting for us at Windsor Great Park. You know where the polo is. I've got something I want to tell you. Oh yes. Room service. We send up four large family-sized bottles of tranquilizers <laughs> and twelve pots of warm sweet tea. Thank you. <laughs> Be brave. Oh, yes. Take this like a man. Yes, no, that lovely money of yours. Yes, indeed. I've given it to the F F F F. <laughs> Oh, my God.